If you plan to deport them, how would you do that legally? Dude, the media should have been asking these questions like for months at this point. And the Democratic Party is the Democratic Party is absolutely a fall for this. Yeah. Kamala confirmed chatter. You said this word for word last week about the logistics of mass deportations. Guys, I'm not a brilliant political tactician, okay? I'm a normal person who sees what the fuck is going on and has, like, a conscious, okay? Th what she's doing here, verbatim, what I've said she should be doing for a very long time now, is the bare minimum that I am shocked that they didn't get to already, okay? Fall back on being a dumbass quick. What? I, I mean, the <laughs> first of all, this is a moment where I should be saying... I have the gift of prophecy. Like, I call me Apollo, not calling myself a dumbass. The reason why I'm saying that is because even as a dumbass, okay, I can see certain things that are going on and be like, why won't she communicate conscience? Sorry, not conscience. It's just common sense. But yeah, here. Vice President Kamala Harris on Wednesday criticized the Republican Donald Trump's promise to deport millions of people who are in the United States illegally questioning whether he would rely on massive raids and detention camps to carry it out. Harris, the presidential nominee, told the Congressional Hispanic Caucus Institute's annual leadership congress that the nation can find both a pathway to citizenship for those who want to come and at the same time secure the border. We can do both and we must do both, she said. Trump, for his part, was heading to Uniondale in New York, Long Island as both candidates took a break Wednesday from campaigning. Harris harked back at the Trump administration's immigration policies as she bid for Hispanic support. While we fight to move our nation forward to a brighter future, Donald Trump and his extremist allies will keep trying to pull us backwards, Harris said. We all remember what they did to fair... Oh, thank God! We all remember what they did to tear families apart, and now they have pledged to carry out the largest deportation, a mass deportation in American history. Imagine what that would look like and what that would be. How is that going to happen? Massive raids? Massive. Okay, this is verbatim what I've said on stream like a thousand times over. I get it. Okay, now I know why. Now I know why chatters are, are, were saying what they were saying earlier. Okay, massive raids, massive detention camps. What are they talking about? She said her staffers finally caught up on the uh, caught up on the vods. Meanwhile, this is what JD Vance is uh, doing. Hi, Senator Mia McCarthy with Politico. Um, question for you about the Haitian migrants in Springfield. Um, so I know you've talked a lot about how we need to deport illegal aliens, but I wanted to ask you, the majority of the Haitians in Springfield came under TPS, um, so they are here legally. And I know you've expressed a lot of your issues with the TPS program and wanting to change that um, under a Trump Vance administration. But I guess my question for you is, if you become the vice president under a Trump administration, what will you guys do about the migrants that are already there, since they did arrive legally? Um, and a follow-up to that, if you plan to deport them, how would you do that legally? Dude, the media should have been asking these questions, like, for months at this point. And the Democratic Party is, the Democratic Party is absolutely a fall for this. Yeah, 54% of Americans back mass deportation of immigrants. It was higher than that, like, two months ago, by the way. Okay? 54% of respondents, 86% of Republicans, 58% of independents, and 25% of Democrats said they strongly or somewhat support a wide-scale effort to deport millions of immigrants, and 59% said they are closely following the immigration situation at the U.S.-Mexico border. They're not, okay? It used to be 60%, now it's down to 54%. Now, I need you to understand something, okay? People look at this poll and go, oh my God, America is so... And to, to a certain degree, yes, you're right, America is very... But what you also fail to consider is that these guys, once again, have no... Instead, the Democrats have personally launched their own right-wing white nativist anti-immigrant sentiment in the form of legislation. Okay? Democrats have adopted the right-wing framing on the matter, which was always insane. I fear that Kamala Harris is far too late to the game uh, and, and, you know, switching her trajectory now. And I don't know if there's going to be enough, enough time for her to uh, adequately craft a narrative around it Especially when it'll be called in the question, like her, her, her policy prescriptions will be called in the question. A really phenomenal time to do this would have been during the debate because, and I've been saying this 
uh, quite a bit as well, especially recently with the Haitian immigrant stuff. One of the aspects of, of how frustrating the Trump administration was for average Americans was the reality that Trump greatly accelerated, galvanized, emboldened some of the biggest dumbasses in our country, okay? That is a massive, massive motivator to get people to go out and vote against Donald Trump. Like, it is not just a, it is not, it's not an issue that causes, like, significant material harm, okay? To advocate for, uh, to advocate against the, the Republican Party's, like, endless blood libel against migrants is already both the, the morally correct position and also beyond that, a, a smart political position to take as well. But beyond that, just to simply remind people one of the most significant aspects of the Trump administration from the, the, from the eyes of like the median voter that doesn't really like to pay attention to issues at all, okay, is emboldening the dumbest people in society into feeling like their opinion is worth a damn. Do you see what I'm saying? That was an incredibly stupid time. People were just like straight up dying from COVID and still denying its existence on their deathbeds. People were getting separated from their children and being placed into concentration camps at the border. And the defenders of this unimaginably cruel policy were outwardly just being like, nah, they deserve it, brother. Shut the up. You're a Remember how that felt. If you can't think about the, the abject cruelty on its own as a standalone problem, then think about how that made you feel. Think about how angry and resentful that made you feel. That is absolutely a phenomenal anti-Trump message that she can run on. To be like, see, remember this Haitian migrant? It is basically a callback to all of the times that the Republicans lied about a multitude of different uh, issues and had their followers chirp and repeat those ridiculous lies. That's it. Well, look, th this, is, this is a media and Kamala Harris fact check that I want to I clarify and clear up right now. And here's, now the media loves to say that the Haitian migrants, hundreds of thousands of them, by the way, 20,000 in Springfield, but hundreds of thousands of them all across our country, they are here legally. And what they mean they are, is that though. Kamala Harris used two separate programs. Mass they are, though. You're just, you just don't want them to be here legally. Like, whether you recognize that they're here legally or not doesn't change the reality that they are here legally. You just want to make them illegal. You want to believe that they're illegal. That, by the way, that right there is actually the truth, which is the difference between an undocumented migrant and a documented migrant is paper okay that's it this is the the other side of that reality and it gets scary when you think about it from the from the framework of the republicans where they're like well they're here legally but it doesn't matter i still think they're illegal and i will take away their paperwork versus what i say which is they're here legally and the people here who are illegal could be made to be legal migrants parole and temporary protective status she used two programs to wave a wand and to say we're not going to deport those people here well if kamala harris waves the wand illegally and says these people are now here legally i'm still going to call them an illegal alien an illegal action from Kamala. i just want to point to something here two different things that i want to fucking mention one trump blocks venezuelan's deportation and last political gift two trump grants venezuelan's temporary legal status on his way out okay just understand that like a lot of the Venezuelans that came here came here directly as a consequence of, of Donald Trump's crippling sanctions on Venezuela. Okay. And not only that, not only that, but also he granted them TPS. I think part of the reason why they're hitting the Haitian stuff instead of the Venezuelan stuff uh, any longer is because obviously Trump granted Venezuelans TPS. Okay. Temporary protective status the legal framework for them to exist in inside of the U.S. boundaries without any additional scrutiny, okay? But he did also end TPS for Haitians. So now he can say, you know, we're anti, we're, we're, we didn't do the Haitian thing. Kamala Harris did. <sighs> Having said that, however, there were already hundreds of thousands of Haitians with TPS, temporary protected status, living inside of the U.S. borders. And they continued under the they continue to receive an extension on their temporary protective status under the trump administration as well 
Here it is. Haiti was initially designated on the basis of extraordinary and temporary conditions of Haiti that prevented nationals of Haiti from returning in safely. Following the initial designation, TPS for Haiti was extended and redesignated once from July 23rd, 2011 through January 22nd, 2013, based on the extraordinary and temporary conditions. Thereafter, TPS for Haiti was extended four times based on extraordinary and temporary conditions, uh, 23, 2013 to 2014, 2014 to 2016, 2016 to 2017, and from 2017 to 2018. Subsequently, the secretary announced the termination of the TPS designation of Haiti effective uh, on 2019. So Trump both extended the TPS status to Haitian migrants and then revoked it. Okay, he did. But this has been an ongoing, this has been an ongoing uh, temporary immigration status that has been afforded to victims of, of major conflicts uh, for, for a very long time. Okay, it's not new. And Trump did this as well. Trump also happened to take away the TPS status of Haitians, for the record. But once again, he definitely did not do so for Venezuelans. Okay? So when these talk about the magic wand, what they fail to uh, mention or what they fail to acknowledge is that they've also waived that magic wand. Okay? Kamala Harris does not make an alien legal. That is not how this works. Yeah, shut the up. Anyway, here, yeah, the yeah. Democrats are changing Let their me messaging a little bit, finally going back to the old school Democratic Party, which was still not good enough, but at least it wasn't like overtly and also completely captured by right wing interests. Yes. Let me be clear. We believe in an immigration system that reflects our values. We don't demonize immigrants. We don't single them out for attacks. We don't believe they're poisoning the blood of the country. We're a nation of immigrants, and that's why we're so damn strong. Let me it shouldn't have taken them to get to this point only after, like, Republicans try to do pogroms in Springfield, Ohio by uh, doing blood libel on Haitian immigrants. Okay? It's ridiculous. Like, Republicans are going full Nazi on the timeline, and the dumbass Democrats only now are like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we should uh, say something about this. Anyway, that's the reason why I'm riding with Biden, though, because he's brave enough to say these truth, uh, truthful things like America is a nation of immigrants. Like you said, they're finally taking advantage of this as a campaigning opportunity. I know it's so insane that it, it has taken this long. It's so goddamn frustrating. Anyway, I'm riding with Biden because he didn't. Now they have pledged to carry out the largest deportation, a mass deportation in American history. Imagine what that would look like and what that would be. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve. Okay, dude. One of the funniest things is, yeah, we got liberals going, your best fit is ambivalent right, along with 12% of the public. Shocked to find out. Shocked to find out that a Kamala Harris supporter is ambivalent right. Anyway, these poll results about respondents saying that they would love for mass, my, uh, mass deportations to happen in this country are correct. It's a correct snapshot that reflects... Uh, how far right we've moved on this issue. But these polls can change, and they do change. And the only way they change is either, A, if the Democrats launch, uh, launch, launch successful counter-messaging against this, okay, as I've been begging for them to do so for months, for years, and especially so uh, in the last couple of months. And then beyond the successful counter-messaging, the alternative is, once these policies are implemented, once these policies are implemented, only then do Americans recognize the cruelty of such policies and the devastating impact that such policies might have in the economy in general. That's the problem. A lot of these dumb, including liberals, including centrists, including independents, don't actually think about the outcome. They just hear something. They hear it over and over again. They think to themselves, oh my God, immigrants are doing insane, I believe. And it's not like the Democrats are saying the opposite. So I'm willing to believe that myself, that immigrants are doing massive, okay? And then they see the polls, especially after they see the polls of like 62% of the public saying like they want mass deportations. There is no counter messaging for it whatsoever, right? They go along with it out of the fear that they have. The fear that like, oh, people really want this it really ends up happening. And only then people go, oh, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. This happened under Trump as well. This literally happened in between the time frame of 2016 and 2020. 
people genuinely despise Donald Trump's immigration policies. Okay? Why did they despise it? Because they were separating children from their family members at the border and then using those children as a honeypot to catch additional migrants. They were doing dragnets. They were doing mass deportations. And the Democrats, because they were in no position of power, were behaving like the little radicals they are when they're far removed from power. Okay? All of the independent thinkers that love watching American TV and love, uh, you know, paying close attention to politics in general are just bots that repeat whatever television man tells them. They do not think on their own about the impact of such policies. They do not think on their own about, like, the veracity of the claims being made on television about migrants, especially when there is no one on the other side of the duopoly saying, where are you getting this migrant from, dumbass? You just made it the f up. You made it up because they did. They hyper-focus on anecdotes, and those are very emotional. Those are very emotionally charged anecdotes, and the Democrats are too scared to oppose it. They can't just be like, dude, what are you talking about? 20,000 homicides occurred on U.S. soil. You're talking about 24 homicides? Are you insane? We actually want to curb back homicides. You very clearly don't give about it. You just, the only thing... It seems to me the only thing you don't like about the homicides is that it's not a natural born U.S. citizen doing it. Okay, that's the only time it seems to be in the wrong. Republicans only care about or when it's a non-American doing it. Clearly. And when that's not enough, when they still want to push the needle further, they just start making extra up. Like, oh, they're eating your cats and dogs. They're eating your pets. It's crazy. These are the very same people if polled would also in without even a shred of like without even a shred of recognition for the irony would say they are for mass amnesty. OK, I'm letting you know right now. I know for a fact that if you were to ask every single one of these people, do you think there should be a pathway to citizenship for people who have, you know, been inside of the U.S. borders for however many years? As long as they have a uh, they have no uh, background, they would say absolutely, and they do. They pulled it, and you see it in the anecdotes as well. You see this in the anecdotes. <laughs> like there will be Trump supporters who are like, "Yeah, my mom is uh, undocumented. Build the wall." But also, my mom should uh, be allowed inside the wall and become a you know become a citizen. It's like, okay, that's weird. Why did you just what like? Those two things are at odds with one another, but okay. Anyway, some to consider. What? What did you say about this? I didn't see vids in your highlight channel. And, and that what do you mean? I did. I did cover it when it happened. It's not that big of a deal. It's only not that big of a deal that Richard Lowry said the N-word because he basically writes it out in every article that he writes without actually saying the N-word, okay? That's the reason why you probably didn't see a highlight even though I did cover it. It would be... A bigger deal to me at least it would be a bigger deal to me at least if he wasn't saying it two springfield residents calling to complain about haitian uh, migrants taking geese the audio is not broken i just have the best goddamn noise gate in the game have you seen this yet oh i i was gonna cover this yes god i love the republicans so much yeah he said the n-word with a hard r man he had a freudian slip okay he just rolled off the tongue too good all right we're gonna cover Drop sites Ryan Grimm uh, destroying Matt Walsh, apparently. Okay, I want to see him humiliate this little demon. Be catching me lacking. Don't get caught lagging at the top of the hour, though, because there's a three minute ad break coming for you at the top of the hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $6, even though it's September, so it's 30% off, or for free with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. You can also get gifted a sub. That's it. Lexi T, thank you for the five gifted subs. Here's the three minute ad break now. Nobody thinks that it will benefit America to become more like Haiti. Nobody thinks that. Uh, or I would challenge anyone if they do think. Yeah, who's gonna, who is going to like absolutely eviscerate uh, 
America in the way that America has gutted Haiti. Barry Balls, thank you for the 10 community to give the subs. Like, what do you mean? The problem here is, the problem here is for this, okay? He thinks Haiti is the way it is because black people run it, okay? He does not care about anything other than that. That's the reason why he's saying that, okay? What a stupid argument. Oh, well, it wouldn't, no one would think that it would benefit America if it turned into Haiti. It's like, yeah, except we would have, we would need a force so powerful that it must be extraterrestrial because China could not do that to the United States of America as it stands currently. It would literally need to be aliens. That's the power differential between the United States of America and Haiti. Okay? So we would need, like, aliens the America up in the way that we've Haiti up. It has nothing to do with the fact that, like, black people run the show there. Okay? Unless you're a little animal. I think that to explain how that's the case. Like, in what way could this country be improved by making it more like Haiti? When you look at Haiti, what part of Haiti are you saying to yourself, we need more of that? Beaches. Well, well we, yeah, we, I, we have more beaches in them, too. Right, don't we? Right. Do we, I mean, we're we, much bigger. We don't want a marine invasion and occupation of the United States that constantly decapitates governments and and takes takes the money out of the country and yeah, like, saddles us with we don't like, want the Clintons debt either. from a revolution. Yeah. Right. And, Although I don't, I don't. So you're we, saying we, that we wouldn't want to be. Like, He's like, well, what do you mean? I thought we were on the same page. Uh, I thought you were uh, also going to say that it's black people that that is uh, the primary responsible party for Haiti being in the conditions that they're in. Uh, I don't understand. Like a, basically a, a He's making fun of you, Matt, because you're an idiot, okay? Because he's smarter than you. That's what's going on here. You dumbass. He's offering materialist analysis as to why Haiti is, the situa is in the situation that it's in. A colony that the entire West spends 200 years punishing after the Haitian Revolution. I, I get that, but I, but I understand that. Oh, I get that. Oh, yeah. Do you? Do you get that? Like, how would that work? An alien force comes onto the planet, destroys, uh, it destroys and, and, and uh, you know, makes every American citizen a slave, does horrifying things to them, and then Americans revolt against it, and then the alien colony is so goddamn powerful that they literally go, okay, you know what, you a bunch of our people, but, like, you still have to pay us reparations for actually, you know, uh, fighting against the, the mass slavery that we put upon you. And then aliens also simultaneously are like, we got to make sure that these guys, uh, no one else in all of our other planets that we've colonized, you know, uh, learn the lessons that, uh, of the Haitian revolution or the American revolution in this instance. So we have to make sure again, to keep them docile and, and, you know, destroy their country every couple of years so that like other other humans don't actually look at that and go, oh, that's successful. We should do that here ourselves. That, but also yeah. at a certain, we point, wouldn't want that. No, yes, we wouldn't want that. But I would also say that that uh, that's not entirely why Haiti's in the position that it's in. I mean, at a certain point, as a country, you have to. Oh, he's gonna do the classic like, well, you know, this is this is the classic American position. It's like, well, slavery was abolished, so why are black people still poor? Okay, move on. Haitian Revolution happened, and uh, all the things that you just described post Haitian Revolution, well, you know, that's uh, inconsequential. To s stand on your own two feet and take care of yourself. And, but but uh, at what point is that? that let's, they, they, elect, they elect Aristide, and we overthrow Aristide. Then they elect Jovenel Moyes. Jovenel Moyes has assassinated a bunch of, a bunch of people with American connections, and then we install in 2021. Like the United States installed the prime minister that we just ousted. Like, so we could say, okay, yeah, you, you gotta get over the, you know, 200 years ago, but like, we're still doing it. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not in favor of, I'm, I'm, I'm very non-interventionist in my policies, so I'm not in favor of the things that we're doing in, in other countries. We, we just made the new government in Haiti, in a hotel room in Jamaica, and then we insisted that whatever government we made in Jamaica had to allow Kenyan police, Kenyan troops to come in under the flag of the UN in order to go to war with uh, the gangs. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm not interested in, right. if it were up to me, I'm not interested in doing anything in Haiti. Like, like let Haiti be Haiti and take care of them. That, that's sort of my, my whole point here. Uh, no, you're not. Because you're using what we have done in terms of, in terms of destabilizing Haiti as a way, uh, while, while avoiding that, as a way to say like, well, black people don't know how to run.
Like that's the, that's the point that you made a point that requires everyone listening to not know anything about Haiti, which is fine because most people don't know anything about Haiti. That's the whole point. That's the reason why people get away with saying like insanely on a regular basis, let them take care of themselves and their own problems. I'm also not saying that there's like never a scenario where we let someone from Haiti into the country. Uh, but it doesn't have to just be about Haiti, but when you're throwing open the gates and just inviting anyone, uh, in particular, you know, I the guess third world I guess your play. assumption there was that it is. The United States is largely responsible for a lot of issues in Haiti, though. But of course, a conservative would ne never recognize that. You're wrong. Conservatives have recognized that and will continue to recognize that. That's the other part of the problem. You want to know why conservatives do recognize that as a simple talking point without ever thinking about it beyond that? Because the Clintons played a prominent role in up Haiti. Here is Donald Trump during the third presidential debate in 2016 telling Hillary this. And you take a look at the people of Haiti. I was at Little Haiti the other day in Florida, and I want to tell you they hate the Clintons, because what's happened in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation is a disgrace. And you know it, and they know it, and everybody knows Secretary it. Secretary Clinton. Well, very quickly, we... Uh... Look at that. As a simple talking point, they know how to deploy that real easy, okay? They hate the Clintons, so they're like, yeah, Clinton's up Haiti. The Haitian people that are creating the conditions on Haiti, and that if the Haitian people come to Springfield, they will recreate the conditions well, but I don't think you Haiti could... in Springfield, whereas what I'm saying is that it's actually the U.S. that has I largely... I was gone for a bit. Did you see this? J.D. Vance lied again. Oh, yeah, I did see this earlier today. I, I, forgot to, I forgot to cover it. Why we need professional journalists. J.D. Vance rep tells Wall Street Journal about Anna Kilgore, a Springfield, Ohio woman whose cat went missing in August. So, Chris Marr from Wall Street Journal, Pittsburgh-based Wall Street Journal reporter, drives to her house she found the cat in her basement and apologized to her haitian neighbors a van spokesperson on tuesday provided the washington journal with a police report in which the resident had claimed her pet might have been taken by haitian neighbors but when a reporter went to the house she said her cat missy miss sassy which went missing in late august had actually returned a few days later found safe in her own basement kilgore wearing a trump shirt and hat said she apologized to her Haitian neighbors with the help of her daughter and a mobile phone translation app. I don't even give a f how old this lady is. She needs to go and work on the land, okay? She needs to toil the land for at least a year. Do you understand? This is my solution. Send her to the camp. Send her to work the goddamn fields. Re-educate her, teach her poetry teach her the arts in the process. Okay, that's it. This is after a week of coverage by mainstream media. They're more complicit in this than this women. They ran with a lie and let the liar repeat it over and over again. For sure, I agree. And you know I agree. I've been yelling about this nonstop. But also think about sending her to the camp. Like, re-education is a necessity at this point. You know what I mean? Think about how sick that would be. Omar CNN did a ride along with some Haitians in Springfield, Ohio, getting picked up early morning for work. This van gets those that don't have transportation to their jobs. Part of why Haitians are settling in Springfield because demand for work Other is high. Other Haitian workers piled in <laughs> on their way to their factory job in a nearby town. This will be our seventh pickup. We pull up, they're sitting on the porch ready to go. The company that organizes these vans says the demand for workers is high. Maybe just the first education? Yeah, that's what I mean. Re-education is education, okay? Everybody gets weirded out when I say those words, but honestly, like, I just mean rehabilitation, okay? I'm using spicy language surrounding it, but, like, these people need education. Like, they actually do. They do. They need rehabilitation. They need education. They need to be normal, productive members of society again. They are completely checked out, okay? Many just don't have a way to get to work. The president estimates most of their business comes from Haitian immigrants. At this point, we are probably a 60-40 split. They add a great benefit to our workforce. These hopeful workers showed up just as the doors opened Tuesday. Or when would he like to start work? Uh, cuando puede ser? He, he, say, he like, says today. We're averaging 18 to 25 people a day. And that's people looking for new jobs? Yes, people that are actively looking for employment. We'll live. Haiti because of the chaos. 
Vilson Dorsonville was a doctor in Haiti. He says he fled because he was going to be kidnapped. He's been in Springfield now a little over three years. But That's the other part of this is like, listen, dude, for those of us who are at least like first generation or fresh off the boat, like that are fortunate enough to be able to live on U.S. soil, like our parents are straight up insanely educated, insanely overqualified when they come here. But because of in this circumstance, like the color of their skin or where they're from, you got a toothless, inbred, white supremacist piece of living in the town that you now have to work in, where you are incredibly overqualified for the job that you're working on, making significantly less than you deserve, going, that right there is stealing my cats. And it's like, what are we talking about, dude? What the f are you saying? Like, that is so goddamn frustrating, dude. That's white supremacy. That's why it's, like, super funny to say this about Haitians who are, like, speaking four languages. You can speak four goddamn languages. You got one lady who can't even speak the English language that she learned since birth, being like, they're lesser than me. I know it. Dude's like an engineer and now has to do Uber Eats delivery here. And you're like, yeah, my god dang. Uber Eats delivery driver stole my cat. I know it because television man told me. Who the f are you? But he had to leave his fiance and young daughter back home. I'm trying to deal with it, but you know, it's still very hard. Yeah. How old is she? Hey, she's three and a half right now. Yeah. So she would have been just born right as you were leaving. Not even yet born. Oh. Not even yet. So you haven't met your daughter yet? I haven't. We just talked through video call. I didn't want to leave to tell you the truth. So I had no choice. It was either it was either your life or getting to see the birth of your daughter. Yes. His doctor credentials also didn't carry over. So for now, he's studying to be a registered nurse. Recently, though, his schooling has been virtual because of initially believed threats of also elementary schools and government buildings were evacuated in recent days. We're such a goddamn cruel ass nation, dude. We're such a we're such an awful country. <laughs> like it's so up. It's just so insane, dude. Oh my god. Days, along with an annual festival celebrating diversity, canceled. These threats uh, have all been hoaxes. We have people, uh, unfortunately. By the way, the absolute idiocy of the Republican Party in full display. Republican Governor Mike DeWine comes out and says we've had like ten threats. Okay, in the past two days. Luckily, they've all been hoaxes, as in they're not real, right? Like they're lying about uh, there being a, as in there was no real there. Like they're, they're threats, right? And these idiots, these assholes, either because they genuinely don't understand the English language or are purely monstrous pieces of sometimes both, said, oh, see? He admitted that they're hoaxes, as in they're not like there were no threats being issued. Certainly overseas uh, who are taking these actions. As a precaution, though, the governor announced nearly 40 state patrol troopers will be stationed throughout the school district to sweep each building for threats and stay on site for security. It comes. Definitely normal, cool and good that like every time something is in uh something is 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 in the crosshairs of the republican party like the broader extremely online republican movement that like instantly doxing swatting threats instantly like this is just the norm it is a very weird it is a very weird thing that like doesn't really get discussed all that much but that is straight up what is the normal process now I guess the, the one good thing is that Americans are too fat and lazy to, like, actually do something. And instead, they just, you know, try to use the police force as, a, as their mercenaries. But it's crazy that, like, that is just a normal aspect of, of politics now. ...in the middle of what's been a surge in Haitian population to the roughly 59,000 in Springfield, which had been declining in population. The city now estimates 12 to 15,000 immigrants, many, if not most of them Haitians, call Springfield home. We are hard worker and we are paying a lot of taxes. Yeah, yeah. All to try and make uh, Springfield better. Better. And while the
33% increase in taxable revenue since last year, by the way, due to all these markers working. Do these people calling in fake threats get in trouble? I never see a mention in major media. Uh, not enough. I think they just, uh, I think they often use like, you know, different methods readily available at their disposal, like Google uh, phone numbers and like that. Like there are untraceable means of doing such things. And even if it's not a direct call, it's just like people make sock accounts. People either make sock accounts, uh, like fake emails that make it hard to trace. The influx has boosted the local economy, city officials say. It's also strained resources. People are getting really fed up. It's been a major topic of conversation. Where we feel like people are acting based on fear, panicking. That's the craziest part is that like they're openly saying their resources are strained and it's like, you should be yelling at JD Vance every day, dog. Like, it's not your Haitian neighbor that is the problem here. You understand? It's your goddamn senator and your local officials that are not, like, adequately funding these uh, already crippled resources. And the Haitian community itself, it's confusion. Including around opportunities. With those jobs being open, you know, whose job is it to take? It's an open job. The added tensions in recent days, though, has taken a toll. I was feeling a little bit, feel better right now. My teachers, coworkers, friends, they reach out to me somehow. A lot of people ask, by the way, how do you counter message against that? This is how you do it. Okay. You show an exact, like anecdotes are very powerful. Anecdotes are very powerful. If you don't just like want to parse through the data and you consider that to be boring, then show an anecdote that is positive. Get a guy like positive as in like it, his situation is still horrific, but like, you know, get a guy who's a doctor in Haiti coming here and, and working uh, and, or trying to work as a nurse. Like, that's a that's the way to do it. Show that these are real people. I can't believe I'm saying this. Like, just humanize immigrants, please, is a crazy position that I have found myself advocating for. Like, it's it's wild. Asking me, how are you holding up? Okay, we love you. We need you here. You still see Springfield as a beautiful place. It is. He balances his new life with his old one, dreaming of uniting them both. Sometimes they call me and there is a lot of shooting in the neighborhood. The best way to get them right here in the United States, it's through the school process. Because after graduation, you can like apply to get a green card. Through this, I can get them. Now outside of that's the noise there. But outside of even the recent politics here, I mentioned the strain on resources. We have seen that pop up in various aspects. For example, the state announced new resources for primary health care because those that may be arriving here might not have had the best health care to that point. But also adding state patrol resources to local law enforcement to assist in what they've say, they say has been an increase in dangerous driving. Specifically, they pinpointed to inexperienced Haitian drivers and all others who dish regard the law. So there are pressure points within this community that, that have been tested again well before. I hate cops, dude. Every situation, they got to get a bag. Every situation. Like, they always got to get a bag. Every goddamn situation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all this stuff is, uh, you know, the, the Haitians are fine, but also they're horrible drivers and we need more resources. Yeah, let's not fund the DMV, you know. Uh, offer driving course or anything. We need cops. That's what we need. We need more. We need more cops. No public transit. Okay. Cops is what we need. I'm sorry. Did the roads have potholes? Cop will fix it. Oh, did the, did the traffic lights not work? Cops will fix it. Give more money to the cops. I promise. Please, please, a little bit more funding, sir. Sir, we need a little bit more funding. Please, please, please. Let's look at Springfield, Ohio police budget. I want to know. I want to know. I want to see something. Oh, Clark County approves more than 200 million in the 2024 budget. Clark County has approved a $233.9 million budget for 2024, allocating large sums of money for the county sheriff's office, building upgrades in community and economic development. The budget, which county commissioners approved Wednesday, consists of 61 million for the general fund and 172 million for other funds. This is about 8.1 million increase from 2023's $225 million budget. The largest expense is about 27 million that will go to Clark County Sheriff's Office, up from 19 million last year. 
the sheriff's office regularly has the highest expense with it running several agencies including the clark county jail emergency management agency received about 1 million by the way did i know that ahead of time no i speculated i happen to be correct why because this is the reality in every town this is the reality in every city this is the reality in the united states of america okay this is the exact same thing in every locality township municipality state large city police take up the largest chunk of the budget and then beyond that beyond the regular operational costs that are always increasing police also are a strain on resources because they constantly beat the out of people and they constantly people and then they have to pay civil litigation fees that's the other side of the process yup you see what pharrell williams said what did he say i'm israel chai just kidding i know what he said he said Ooh, popular um popular artists should just shut the f up about politics i never talk about politics unless i'm raising 60 million dollars for the idf okay there you go that's what i think about pharrell williams you can suck my I bet he's happy for the recent politics, but you talk to any of the Haitians here, none of them are being forced to come here. They all heard from someone else, another Haitian that was here previously, that this was a good place to live. And that has been a major portion of why they've ended up be being here. And the city has also come out and said, no one is. Bro, you seriously want Pharrell to call you out? He's not going to hear me say this. Okay. And even if he did call me out, who gives a vampire is forcing them to be here but clearly uh they found something that they wanted in this community again well before all of these politics got involved over the last few weeks anyway all right all right all right what else is on the docket i'm skipping the here's the fed chair good afternoon 